So I finally removed all the stanchions. But now it's all out, so we'll try to get them re-welded. if you'll be able to see but this is kind of where the bolts for the stanchions are inside so I'm gonna try to remove those put silicone it doesn't actually seal it and water comes in I'm removing most of the stanchions because some of them actually cracked at the bottom you can see right there so we're gonna try to have them re-welded and at the same time we're gonna be able to rebed all of them because someone used some silicone which doesn't prevent water from coming in So I finally removed all the stanchions. I ended up needing the help of Corey for one of them. The bolt and the nuts were moving together. Didn't work. But now it's all out, so we'll try to get them re-welded. So it's probably not good that there's this much water in here with our refrigeration compressor, compressor and a bunch of our electrical wires running through there. Another bowl of water from the tension leaking. trying to figure out all the bolts because we had Phillips head bolts all over the stanchions but a lot of them are stripped so it's really hard to screw that on so I'm looking at what we've got in there and might do some swapping so that it's a little easier to put them back on and trying to clean so there's our stanchions over there all ready to get put back on welded up so I had some fun yesterday uh, going over to a friend's place with our the old owner of this boat actually and I learned how to weld some stainless steel. Now my welds aren't quite as clean as maybe a professional but I'm pretty happy the way they turned out. So take a look down here. So this is an original weld here you can see that's quite clean. Um, reasonably good weld I would say. But here is one of my be better welds out of the three. You can see it's not quite as cleaned up. I think there's an acid wash or something. You need to clean it up a little bit more, but at least it's relatively solid. You can see this, this part of the weld didn't turn out so nice. And the backside I couldn't actually get to. But it's a lot stronger than it was. Oh, and I, I figured just for good measure, I'll show you the worst weld down here. Um, this is probably my worst attempt. The steel got a little bit too hot. But anyways, I learned a lot in the process and now I feel a lot more comfortable if I ever need to weld something kind of on the fly. I mean, obviously I won't have a welder with me, but if I ever can get my hands on one, at least uh, I can do a job.
is the mission. It's sticky, but it's going to be good when we finally have all the butyl tape and all the extensions back on because it's calling for more rain this week and I don't want our compressor to go underwater again. <laughs> that's tightening the nuts inside the boat while I'm holding this crew outside. So we got quite the little setup here. It's a pretty tight space, you know, about that much of my finger to get in behind for our tow rail and our stanchions here. So uh, Alex figured it all out all by herself when uh, I was working one day. And basically the setup here is one, one mirror so that we can actually see up into the bow or sorry up in underneath here uh, a light obviously so we can see a little bit and then we got our wrenches but i realized i have to get the washer and lock washer on the the bolt first luckily there's a little bit of butyl tape that kind of holds it there once i shove it on and then i put the nut in here and i have just enough room without the wrench to to kind of thread it on and then I can use the wrench for the first few threads. So it's a bit of a long process. This is awesome. It feels like summer. April, what are we today? April 7th, I think? I think so. It's like 18 degrees. I'm in my t-shirt and we're working on the boat. <laughs> it's going pretty well. We finally have lifelines. They're back on which is kind of nice because we're working from really high if you guys haven't noticed and I don't really want to fall. So that's kind of good. And that means no more water is going to be getting in. I'm loving this butyl tape. It works really well. It's like almost like play-doh. It's really sticky. And it's worked really well actually, just even filling up the holes, the little gaps when we didn't have the stanchions and the rain wasn't coming in. So, so far so good. Oh, that was a mission. <laughs> it's a bit of a painful mission. We've got these cushions in our city that when we transform the couch into a full bed, they just slide right off because there's no, nothing holding them. So I'm installing some Velcros on the cushion and onto the wood part of it so that they hopefully don't slide away. But it's really tricky because I shouldn't have done that. But I use those industrial type Velcros that have really sticky, sticky backsides. 3M Velcro. It's great stuff for some stuff. Not for this. If you are going to be sewing, just buy the Velcros that don't have this sticky painfulness on the back. So really, that one, I, well not this one, but some of them I've had soaking with acetone to try to remove most of the stickiness. Kind of works, but then they're still really hard to get through, so I'm like, I can't do it with my fingers. So, I got, whoops. Not working when I'm trying to show away. Yeah, <laughs> so I've got those awesome vice grips. That kind of works. That's the only way I've been able to sew through this mess. It's crazy. Like I'm sewing a tiny little vacuum, which would usually take me like, I don't know, like a minute to sew. It's taking me a half hour almost. Ugh. We'll see. It's March 1st, a beautiful sunny day for the first time in a while. And I'm actually trying to sand down this 
terrible job of gel coat that I did here because I globbed it on a little too thick. So I'm just trying to sand it down, get rid of some of the excess. And I'm just putting a little tape around it so I don't uh, destroy too much of the current gel coat that's already on there. But while I was doing this, I kind of realized that we have a bit of a problem. Uh, we were always wondering where the leak was coming right below our window. We just did this window, so we were pretty sure it wasn't the window itself. And all along here in the, the quarter berth, it was always dripping in a few different locations. So uh, if you look over here, we got a little bit of water like dripping down from our tow rail, but the tow rail is completely dry. So that's telling me that there's obviously some water seeping in underneath the tow rail. And uh, actually, I don't know how the hull to deck joint is, but I think there's some water getting in underneath the, the deck. So we're gonna try to fix that later on this season. Attempting to get off the zincs. We've tried this a couple times with much smaller tools. Now I got a big wrench, so if I can't take it off with this, there's probably a problem. Let's see how it goes. So, she cracked. Man, I put a lot of force on that with this long of a, of a wrench. I'm really glad I had it because I don't think I would have been able to do it otherwise. All right, now I should be able to take the shorter one. We're in business. Do you have a stubborn zinc like we do? Well, I have a solution for you. It's called the double wrench technique. Have you heard of the double wrench technique? If you haven't, you've been missing out. So basically you take the wrench you need. You need to be able to get the round end on the wrench or on the socket that you're trying to take off or bolt. You get it on and then you use the other wrench as a, sorry. You know. He doesn't know his technique. Pretty bad, eh? Which, which way does it go? <laughs> no. There we go. So you just fumble with it a little bit to get the right direction. So if I need to turn it that way, I can pull on that wrench all the way at this end to turn it. If I need to turn it the other way, then it's got to go the opposite way. Whoop. See, look, I can't even figure it out. There we go. It's got to go like that. So you just kind of fumble with it a little bit and work out which direction you need the force from. So let's see how it works. We got this thing out. Look at this. And it still seems pretty decent actually. It's like, I mean, you can see the corrosion on top of it, but it's really working well. And we'll be able to just clean it a little bit and put it back in. So I am wire brushing the zinc because it's still good. There's more than 50% left of it. And I'm gonna put it back in with a new gasket. So we put some, what is it called again, Corey? Um, I think it's like plumber's putty or something like that. 
plumber's putty type thing on our sink. And it should be all good. I don't think it's plumber's putty though. Oh no, PFT T E. So, we got some tools. I borrowed this from work, a torque wrench. We're gonna torque our keel bolts with this uh, inch and a inch and an eighth socket. Uh, apparently, it's supposed to take uh, two two seventy. 270 pounds of torque, but this wrench only goes up to 250 and I, I highly doubt I'll be able to get that much uh, Torque on it, but anyway two 270 ish uh, Dry and wet was like 205 I believe so we're gonna see what we can do here it's Definitely moved. It's not easy in this small spot. So this is at 160 and so there we go, it was at 160 but I still turned that about an eighth of a turn before it got to 160 so the Torque spec is way out of whack. I'm not even close to what we're supposed to be at. So I'm going to slowly torque these up and try to figure out what the lowest was. So I'm thinking it was more like 150 based on on what I just saw there. So let's see here. This is 150. I haven't tightened this bolt yet. Oh, maybe even lower than that. Because that turned quite a bit. Yeah. I already turned that at 100 pounds, again about an eighth of a turn, so I'm thinking it was probably close to 80 pounds on this particular keel bolt, which was, it was similar for the other ones. So that's, uh, I'm really glad we're doing the keel bolts right now because it was way under spec. Replacing Seacocks. So that through hall right behind me, that's the one for the sink in the head. And right now it's made out of plastic, which is fine if you're if it's out of the water. But that one is actually most of the time below water, especially when we're sailing and healing over. And there's no ball valve or gate valve, so water flows back into the boat if we're healed over quite a bit. So I'm gonna try to remove the plastic through hull, put a bronze one with a ball valve. So right there, that's where the sink from our head goes into the ocean water. I think that's too high. Eh, no. I think that's 5200 that's really stuck on. It was replaced not that long ago too by the other owner. So I finally managed to get it unseized with these massive wrenches and now I'm unscrewing ah, this part over there. I'm trying to warm up the seacock and gate valve because it's totally seized up and I can't get it off and I'm trying to replace it for a ball valve. I'm so happy I finally got the gate valve taken apart. This piece was preventing the gate valve to actually spin around so that I could take it off. So I had to remove this and I've been at that for like way too long. I took a break, got back at it, finally got it out. A couple of nicks in the fingers, but it's out. Okay, so that's the through valve seacock right down there and it just wouldn't spin around so I had to take out the little um, nub, the gate valve nub so that it would spin around so that now I can actually take it off and replace it with a ball valve.
Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna think that's one of part two. Everything's so small in the boat. Gotta take everything out. So I'm in my hole again trying to replace all the seacocks because right now we have ball valves, no, sorry, gate valves, which you never really know if they're actually fully closed up. So we're putting gate, gosh, I keep mixing those. We are replacing all of our gate valves for ball valves because gate valves are those ones and you never really know if they're fully closed up. So we're switching for ball valves, which you can easily tell if it's closed or open but it's quite the job so right now I'm gonna take this one apart because the handle doesn't fit hey okay. hopefully that uh, hopefully this goes in look at this how beautiful it is finally got it on So, we're removing through holes. <laughs> <laughs> 